Well, if you have been watching our coverage of the uh, WNBA star Brittany Griner on her troubles abroad in Russia, you already know uh, that she was arrested back in February uh, for carrying cannabis oil into Russia. She had a vaping pen, and that's pretty much illegal. I mean, they're, they're calling it smuggling. Uh, according to the authorities in Russia. Uh, before we get into this update, uh, thank you very much for subscribing, liking, and sharing. Those of you who haven't done that yet, please subscribe, like, share. Don't forget to comment. Leave a comment in the comments line. We do appreciate that. Uh, we've had a lot of views in the last two weeks during the holidays, especially, especially since this is a slow season. I thank you for those who have stayed with us. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's get on with this. Yes, get on with it! So we recently got this the other day. Uh, we've been trying to uh, cover this as best as we can because it's not so much information. You know, literally, this is something in another country. And when it comes to coverage, uh, you know, most of the time you're dealing with overseas broadcasters. And a lot of times you can get something and sometimes it's delayed a, a little bit on there. And somebody you have to wait for Reuters to put it out on the, there because, you know, you're, you're dealing with country with different laws than us and when it comes to the press eh, you know you're getting what you can get at the time period and what we did get coming out of russia is that the wnba star Brittany griner has pleaded guilty to drug charges in a russian court now before you get too excited <clears throat> and saying you know she must have been pushed into this and that basically, you know, her lawyer is, is completely insane, you know, to this whole situation. I mean, we'll go into it with the article on there from the post on there, but understand, understand, if your case, if you're arrested in Russia and you have, and you're in jail and your case ends up in court, and this is why we say in this country is innocent until proven guilty, in that country, it's literally, you know, you'll be found guilty 99, 99% out of 100, 99%. Think about that for a minute. Most lawyers will tell you, plead the guilty and beg the mercy of the court. But we're going to read into this uh, via the New York Post, which was by Reuters. Um, U.S. basketball court Brittany Griner pleaded guilty in a Russian court on Thursday to drugs charges that could could see her face 10 years in prison, a royal journalist reported from the courtroom, but said she had not deliberately broken the law. Griner's family had called on the U.S. President Joe Biden to step up efforts to secure the WNBA star for, for release. I'd like to plead guilty, Your Honor, but there is no intent that I was going to, didn't want to break the law, Griner said, speaking uh, English, which she was translated to Russian for the court. I'd like to give my testimony later. I need time to prepare, she added. The next court hearing was scheduled for July 14. Griner was detained in February at Moscow's Sheremido Airport with vape cartridges containing hashish oil, a substance illegal in the country and has been kept in custody ever since. In a handwritten note, Brittany uh, appealed to Biden directly earlier this week to step up U.S. efforts to bring her home. I realize you're dealing with me so much, but please don't forget about me and other American detainees, Grinder wrote. Please do all you can to bring us home. Biden spoke to Grinder's wife on Wednesday, telling her he was working to have her released as soon as possible, the White House said. The U.S. officials and many athletes have called for the release of Grimer, or as BG as she's known as basketball fans, who say that she's been wrongfully detained. Griner's detention has also prompted concerns that Moscow could be using the two-time Olympian gold medalist to negotiate the release of a high-profile Russian citizen in U.S. custody. Russian authorities said there's no basis to consider Griner's detention illegal and that the case against her is not po political despite Moscow's fraught relations with the United States over the Russian military intervention in the Ukraine. Moscow's deputy foreign minister, Sergei, Sergei Rabikov, Said on Thursday, it was difficult to exchange prisoners with the United States and suggest Washington stop talking about the fate of Griner. Griner, a center for the for the Phoenix Mercury's and Women's Basketball Association, has played 
Uh, UMMC, Ikene Russia's Women's Basketball Premier League to boost her income during the, off se- the WNBA offseason like uh, several other U.S. players. Now, the thing about it is you could take this with a grain of salt to the whole situation, but here is the situation. Griner's not the only American trapped overseas in jail and not only in Russia. There are many Americans that are being held overseas in many different countries. And the American press does not push out all of these people. Does not talk about, they talk about some of them, but not all of them. You know, we find out later after they get released and all that, that, you know, situation, but after many, many years of imprisonment. Now, like I said, is is BG's more important, less important? It's about the same overall. Has this current government done enough to handle the situation? No. Hell fucking no. The way they've been handling this, it's not been good. You had a situation, I think it was in Sweden. We reported this before with, uh, if you remember back in 2019, you know, they discussed ASAP Rocky, who was found guilty in Sweden and what the previous administration did to get him out. See, and that shows you that, you know, the push on there. That administration should have did a lot more because, like I said, there are a lot more people that are in prison in other countries. And the other, and the other half of this is, remember this. Remember this thought. For those of you who are planning trips abroad, take the moment. And I'm telling you, take the moment. Look up the laws. Look what you're putting into your luggage. Look what is in your phone, your laptop, your tablet. If you're going into a country where nudity uh, or partial nudity, pornography, or anything of the nature that's close to that is illegal, you purge it from your phone immediately. Even if it's a, if, even if it's an artistic model or anything of that na- or artistic picture of anything of that nature, if you are a person who vapes, note the laws of the oils that are brought in. And I'm not only talking about cannabis. Look at all the ones that are available. That you know, if you're if you're using a particular oil in your vaping pen, be sure that oil is legal in that country. And if vaping is legal in that country or smoking, remember that situation. And while you're there, note when you're doing photography or anything, note the laws for that as well. There are many laws. There are many, I've put out a couple of videos, but there are other YouTubers out there who have put out detailed videos of countries like Thailand, Indonesia, Russia, Saudi Arabia, you know, the Arab Emirates, many of the, Qatar, many of these countries. I mean, we got a World Cup coming up around the corner. If those of you who are planning to go to uh, that part of the world for World Cup, understand the laws when you get there. You know, you there's a lot that you can do and not do. And especially... If you are female, if you're going over there, understand the laws of what you can wear, what you can wear also as well. I mean, I could tout back to Bali that women have been arrested for wearing thong bikinis. This happens. This is something that goes on day in, day out across the world. People get arrested. Some of them do end up to be okay and get out and they're asked to leave the country and that's fine. You know, but there are others who are in jail for you know, for major, for major, what's considered major situations on that. We already dis- discussed an Instagram um, influencer who was arrested because of the picture she was shooting in Bali. This is a constant. And as far as Brittany, she, she said guilty and understand on that. And she understand her bringing the cannabis oil on there. You know, I understand you want to vape. That's fine. That's fine. That, but don't bring the stuff that's illegal in that country. And people don't. People don't focus on that. Also, there's a great movie. It's 
from 1978. The screenplay was done by, believe it or not, the, the, Oliver Stone did the screenplay on this. And it's based on a true story. It's called Midnight Express, starring Brad Davis. This is a fantastic movie. John Hurt is also in it. Randy Quaid. Uh, right now, I believe you can see this on Crackle. I think Crackle has this right now. If you haven't seen it, and Fubo also has it. If you haven't seen this movie, catch it. And the, and the reason why, this is what can happen to you overseas. This is a true story about Billy Hayes, who was a guy vacationing in Turkey. And he decided, well, let me, I'm going to make some money. And I'm going to bring back uh, hash out of Istanbul. And what happened was he put it, he strapped it to himself and he tried to board the plane and basically he was arrested. At first they thought he was bringing a, they thought he was bringing a bomb aboard, but it actually turned out to be hashish. And they gave him a life sentence, a life sentence. He was in there tortured. He was brutalized. You know, the things that he went through. Now he did finally escape and made it back to the U.S. in the end. Just to give you a little, you know, a spoiler there. But yes, he did make it back, you know, alive and well. But the, but the thoughts of the torture and what he went through. This is stuff that people do go through in certain countries. Especially countries that does not like Americans. This is not uncommon. This is, like I said, this goes on constantly. And like I said, we need, we need as a vacationer, or if you're going there for business also, take the moment. Yes, you are American, but it doesn't give you carte blanche in these countries when it comes to their laws. I mean, even over in, uh, what is it, in Thailand, overstaying your visa, can, you can be jailed for that. Did you know that if you don't get restamped on time, if you stay by a couple of hours, you know, if the police catch you, you can be detained. That can get you a couple of years in, in their jails. And Thailand prisons are not fun either. As much as it's a beautiful country, it's not fun. Their jails are not fun at all. They're very dangerous. You can get sick. And that's the thing in any of most of these jails overseas. Uh, that are in places like in Russia and China, you know, that you can, you can get, you, you can get an illness because they don't care about you getting sick in those prisons. And if you're going through an illness yourself and you have to take pills and that, you think you can get your pill? Mm-mm, they don't care. They don't really care. You know, you could say the human rights groups should be protesting these places and all that. And well, you know, it's a lot harder than you think. Now, it's, Getting back to Brittany, you know, this is what's going to happen. Is she going to get 10 years? It's a possibility. Uh, the trial's still going on uh, uh, July, uh, July 14th. Uh, we'll know more of the situation as, as more of the testimony comes forward. Um, you know, we're hoping for maybe that the judge will just um, basically close it out and ask Brittany to leave the country. She, they might give her, you know, absolve her the whole situation and allow her to leave but then again you know this is the this is a different country different world the whole situation and you know you're guilty before you're declared innocent in in these countries so we'll continue to monitor this subscribe like share comment freely below keep your language to the minimum because I, I know some of you especially on BitChute, language has been a little it's so rough. I understand that, you know, you may not like her, you might not like her politics and you know, all the situation, but be nice in the situation. If you, you know, agree that she should go to jail, that's fine. That's fine. You don't like her, that's fine also. You could say you don't like her, but keep, keep the negativity down to a little muster on there because, you know, a lot of these streaming sites, they don't, they tend to purge your comments. So I want you to have your voice. And that's the one most important thing. I want to have your, your voice out there. And you, you can curse to a minimum, but don't go overboard. You know, don't go overboard. You know, I've had some people that are like, F D F D F D. Leave the F out. You know, like I said, you don't like her politics. You don't like what she's done. Fine. You know, if you want her out of there, also, that's fine. 
you know, that, that's the reason we have this, you know, freedom of speech and all that. You know, we're in the good old U.S. of A., but we got to do it within a good conversation. So, once again, comment freely, subscribe, like, share, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for tuning in, and bye-bye now.